Okay, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Uh, this is the second part of regarding the uh, anatomy of male and female reproductive tract uh, in cattle and buffalo. This is uh, uh, in the previous part I have discussed with you the female reproductive tract in cattle and buffalo. And in this video, I am going to discuss with you the male reproductive tract of bull. Uh, uh, in this uh, lecture, I will be discussing with you the general structure and function of uh, of the of the bull reproductive tract uh, and uh, about uh, different uh, different uh, structures and their functions like uh, uh, the testes, the secondary sex organs, the accessory sex glands, protective, supporting, and other structures. So let's start with the uh, the structure and function of uh, the bull reproductive system. Starting with the 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 testes, and here in, in figure two, you can see the clear cut picture of this this test the testes. Uh, these uh, primary organs have the dual function of producing sperm cells and also the male hormone, which is known as testosterone. A testes is enclosed in the uh, tunica albuginea, surrounded by another tough tunic, uh, uh, the tunica vaginalis. And uh, you can see these, uh, within these testes are uh, some sort of uh, tubules which are known as the seminiferous tubules and these are the site of sperm formation and the, these in turn uh, empty into the collecting duct into the collecting ducts the retitestes and uh, this is a uh, retitestes the central portion you can see here in the figure two on your right side um, which is lined with the cuboidal epithelium, supporting connective tissue, the joints centrally, and forming a fibrous cord, the mediastinum testes. So, uh, if we talk about the the secondary sex organs, which are the ducts and the tubes, which convey the sperm cells of the testes and eventually out of the body. Uh, I'm going to discuss with you uh, these tubes, um, ducts, uh, in order in which the sperm pass through them. Um, okay, so if we talk about the was afferentia, see this uh, picture on the right side, on the upper side. Here is a vas efferentia, uh, uh, ductuli efferentis. These are about 12 ducts which arise from retitestes, which is the central portion uh, in which sperms are, I mean, are dropped after their, uh, the complete process of their uh, formation. And emerging from the testes and uh, emptying into the epididymis. Uh, these, this, the next portion is it, 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 it empties into this portion is epididymis. So this is the duct of epididymis. And uh, about uh, epididymis, um, it's a large tortuous duct outside the testes, outside the testes, um, through which the sperm migrates slowly. And uh, it is divided into the head body uh, uh, and the tail and the tail portion is the chief site of sperm storage so if we talk about this you can see the head portion the body and the tail so this portion is basically the storage site for the sperms um, the next uh, uh, part is uh, 
um, was deference. So after the tail of the epididymis comes the vas deferens. This is also known as ductus deferens, which is a slender tube connecting the epididymis with the urethra and which um, enlarges into an ampulla just before joining the urethra. So uh, often called as vas deferens. So when um, cut vasectomy, it's known as vasectomy. Uh, next portion is uh, is urethra. Uh, I mean here they haven't shown you the urethra. Uh, here we urethral. So because this structure also includes the bone. Uh, or the muscles so we can see here somewhere here on your left side the picture is depicting the pelvic urethral muscles where uh, nearby are uh, is a urethra so the tube in the penis uh, through which semen is discharged at the time of copulation and and through which urine is excreted okay yeah here it's uh, here and this side, this one. Uh, then is the large one is the penis, which is the organ of copulation. If we talk about the accessory sex glands, um, are there? Here are two seminal vesicles. Uh, you can see here. These are two seminal vesicles. And uh, then comes the bulbourethral uh, glands, two bulbourethral glands, also known as Cowper's glands, uh, which contribute fluid to the semen lying around here in this uh, portion. And one prostate gland, which also contributes uh, liquid to the semen. So actually the accessory sex glands includes three kind of glands, the seminal vesicles, uh, bulbourethral glands and prostrate glands. The fourth and important thing which uh, I would be discussing with you is uh, actually the protective, protective, supporting and other structures. Uh, in, this, uh, uh, in these structures, include uh, the scrotum, which is the pouch of skin surrounding and protecting uh, the testes. And uh, then is uh, external cremaster and tunica dartos muscles. They regulate the temperature of the testes by moving them closer to or farther away from the body wall. So, um, I'm not going to give you the whole details. Um, the protective supporting and other structures also include the spermatic cord, which contains blood vessels, nerves, vas deferens, and muscles which are associated with the testes. It, it, it also includes pemiforms plexus, pemiforms plexus. So um, you can see. Uh, the bullet reproductive tract. Uh, uh, actually, this in this picture only one testy uh, uh, testes uh, has been shown, but there are two testes and two sets of ducts carrying this sperm to the urethra, and it's a single duct which ends here. Um, the urethra is actually a single duct which also carries urine from the bladder. So the testes are oval shaped organs, four to five inches in length, or uh, two to three inches in diameter, with the long axis being vertical. So each testes weighs about 10 to 12 ounces in a mature bull. They lie outside the body cavity in a pouch of skin called the scrotum. An important purpose of the scrotum is to provide uh, the testes with an environment which is a few degrees cooler.
cooler than body temperature and uh, these few degrees maybe two to eight degrees centigrade so this cooler temperature is necessary um, uh, uh, is necessary for the formation of a spermatozoa so failure of the testes to descend from the abdomen into the scrotum associated normally with shortening of the uh, gubernaculum and uh, intra-abdominal pressure which results in a condition known as cryptochoidism. Uh, this will cause sterility if both testes fail to descend. Uh, we, know, uh, we call it bilateral cryptochoidism. Unilateral cryptochid uh, animals may be fertile, but it is thought that, that this condition may be inherited and breeding males possessing this trait should be avoided. I would say directly that these kind of bulls should be culled. So uh, for many years, the external cremaster muscles within the spermatic cord has been thought of as the principal thermoregulator of the scrotum, drying the testes close to the abdomen when cold and relaxing when warm. However, the tunica darkos muscles at the bottom of the scrotum, they also respond to temperature changes or fluctuations, and probably they play a major role in, in temperature regulation of the testes. So it has been shown that uh, uh, the, this later muscle is sensitive to temperature changes only in the presence of the male hormone, testosterone. So blood flowing to the testes is cooled by adjacent venous return in a convoluted complex of vessels called the pam pam uniform plexus which is located just dorsal to the testes so uh, the testes are partially supported by the spermatic cord which runs uh, from the abdomen and is attached to the testes in the scrotum so this band of tissue carrying the ductus deferens blood vessels nerves and muscles associated with the testes they may be eight to ten inches or more in length so the many convoluted mini vestibules in the testes in which spermatozoa are formed finally straightens and join to form the reti testes in the center arising from the reti testes are 12 or more outgrowing ducts the vas afferentia which eff which emerge from the testes and enter the epididymis the epididymis is a single large tortuous tubule lying on the surface of the testes. So its purpose is to collect and store the sperm while the latter undergo a ripening process. So the different parts of the epididymis are referred to as the head, the body, and the tail. The head is known as caput, uh, the body is known as corpus, and the tail is known as corda. So it is the tail of the epididymis that the majority of the sperms are stored. So you can see from this picture all, all these things so uh, thank you very much i think uh, uh, the that would be enough for uh, this lecture